Ghostly white bark hanging in ribbons. A cool, dry breeze seeping through gnarled limbs. Ground so hard you couldn't split it with an axe. This is the home of one of our toughest trees. Once more common throughout the regions of Logan and Ipswich, the so-called Melaleuca urbiana forests of southeast Queensland are now a rare sight, surviving only on black cracking clays that have been spared from development or agriculture. A handful of isolated remnants remain, providing specialized habitat for plants and animals that depend on them. From milk vines to honey eaters, this tree is more important than you might think, and the unique forests it forms are a keystone for biodiversity. With around 75% seemingly gone forever, how can we help this important ecosystem now? This is the story of the weeping paper bark. Eleanor Velasquez and I'm a lecturer in ecology at Griffith University in southeast Queensland. Henderson Reserve, where we are currently filming, is situated in Logan City Council and Perga Nature Reserve in Ipswich City Council are the two reserves that have the most extent of intact Malaluca urbiana forests in southeastern Queensland. Malaluca urbiana has quite a distinct growth habit. When it is healthy, it forms these very dense thickets like the one we're standing in now. These thickets don't actually allow much light to penetrate and this reduces the cover of the understory, i.e. herbs and grasses. It is a mid-story tree reaching about 8 to 12 metres in height and it has tiny leaves which spiral around the branches and flowers and it flowers in spring and summer with these little fluffy, puffy white flower spikes. It forms small woody seed capsules around 3 millimetres in width. Several threatened species are also associated with Melaleuca urbiana remnants, including the grey-headed flying fox, which feeds on the blossoms and is thought to aid in the dispersal of pollen and helps keep the isolated pockets of Melaleuca urbiana connected genetically. The abundance of fallen logs in this ecological community also provides favourable habitat for ground-dwelling reptiles and frog species, which are evident during the wet seasons when temporary pools form on the waterlogged soil. Another plant species of interest is the tongue orchid Docrelia linguiforma, which grows epiphytically on branches of mature trees. The distribution of Malaluca urbiana is very narrow, being located in several small reserves in Queensland, with approximately 1,000 hectares remaining nationally. Most of the current extant population occurring in southeast Queensland is within Logan and Ipswich City Council areas, and this is around 644 hectares. Relatively little is known about Malaluca urbiana's biology and the constraints on its distribution. However, evidence suggests that distribution of Melaleuca urbiana is tightly coupled with the distribution of a specific soil type called tea tree clays. This soil is incredibly hard during the dry months, of which around nine months of the year, Melaleuca urbiana persists in this incredibly hard cracking soil. The soil also expands and contracts so much that it forms what is known as Gilgai depressions and ridges, allowing water to pool in the wet there is also a strong suspicion that due to the long dry season experienced by Melaleuca urbiana, that it is groundwater dependent. So aquifers that we know exist in a local area may allow the species to persist despite these locations being very dry. The swamp tea tree or Melaleuca urbiana forest of southeast Queensland is subject to continued demonstrable threats, notably fragmentation, edge effects from surrounding pastoral and urban lands, clearing, grazing and invasion by weeds and feral animals. First and foremost, land clearing is the most prevalent threat to this ecosystem. My research has also identified that the extreme fragmentation of these reserves is impacting the ability of this species to reproduce. I'm Karen Greaves, I'm the Sustainability Manager for Queensland for Lend Lease and today we're here at Henderson Reserve. Lend Lease Communities has a commitment to maintain and enhance 25% of our natural environment at Yarrabilba. So one of our important initiatives that we have implemented to help us enhance our native environment is we work with Natura Pacific to identify and collect seeds within Yarrabilba that are species that are native to the area or particularly those that are threatened and endangered. Our team goes out on site to collect a range of seeds throughout the site. This ensures genetic variability is maximised and hopefully will help with the longevity of the species. 
After the seeds are collected, Natura Pacific's team then sort through them to make sure that there are no diseased seeds. They package up the instructions for propagation and these seeds are then sent to Borellan Training and Correctional Centre at Ironbark near Ipswich. Here a team of specialised TAFE Queensland educators work with the students to propagate the seeds through a Cert 2 in horticulture and a Cert 2 in rural operations. The trees are grown in small trays and then transplanted into tubes before transportation to our propagation area. Finally, the young plants arrive back at Yarrabilba where they spend time in our nursery, allowing them to get used to the site conditions before they're replanted. G'day folks, my name's John Raven. I'm the councillor for Division 5 and the Deputy Mayor of the City of Logan. Today we're at Moffat Park, which is actually a conservation area and we're doing some amazing planting. We're actually planting an endangered forest today, which you don't get to do every day. And I've, I've had the opportunity to plant a Melaleuca urbiana, which for those of you at home who don't know what that means, it's basically a paperbark that's very rare and it loves Logan. This conservation area has already had over 3,000 trees planted through offset funding and today we've planted an additional 500 Melaleuca urbiana. The trees are all different types and species so they make canopy trees and it really makes it look like natural bushland which is what we love to see. Across the city we've planted over 70,000 trees with our offset planting program. That's about 130 football fields and this is all part of our commitment to make the city of Logan a beautiful, green and clean place to live. Hey, I'm Rebecca Plant, a co-founder of the Business League. We're here today at Logan to support Natura Pacific uh, getting involved in planting the weeping paperbark, which is incredibly rare. We choose to be involved. We've got a national organisation that has people in the Sunshine Coast, in the Gold Coast, in Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney. Um, and for every membership that we have through the Business League, we give a small portion to help plant trees. For us, choosing to give back part of every membership from everyone who is involved in the Business League, all of our clients, um, it helps us really to feel that we can connect in with the land and it really became apparent for Edward and I uh, and our family last year when the bushfires uh, happened and they swept through and we thought what is one thing that we can do to really begin to give back and that's why we chose Nature Pacific to be involved with. The really cool thing about it is that it only costs about six dollars for every tree so it's not a lot for a small business or a medium-sized business to get involved and start to give back. Hi, I'm Jane Frost. I run the Ecology and Sustainability Program at Garibilba State Secondary College. And we're out here planting Melaleuca ibianas here today, which is fantastic because our students learn all about ecology and sustainability in the classroom, but there's nothing like getting out and experiencing it in the real world. Actually getting their hands dirty, actually getting to see the species we're talking about is priceless. Hi, I'm Manaya. I like being outdoors where it's sunny. It makes me feel free, like I can do whatever I want because there's just I love the sounds of the trees blowing and birds chirping and I can see all the funny frogs and butterflies. Hi, I'm Jim Trammell, this is my wife Tracy, and we're at our property at Jimboomba. We've been here for about 20 years and uh, we were first contacted by the council with the uh, specific relevance of these trees. They only grow in this area and Ipswich. The council helps us out with any questions, queries or anything we have and we do our bit to help keep these trees going and uh, protect them for the future so future generations can see them. So at present we have a voluntary conservation uh, order on this property and that means it can't be cleared, it can't be built on and it, that will protect it in the future. I'd like to point out that the council's very uh, good. Uh, they help you out with financial assistance through the Enviro grants and the conservation to uh, help you maintain your block of land. And uh, they're always available for any questions. If you have any weed issues, animal issues, identification issues mm. for trees and plants, they're always on hand to help you. And uh, I would encourage more people to get involved. It's a good thing. This ecological community provides important ecosystem services to the wider region in which it is protected, including a source of insects which aid in agricultural pollination and help us to grow the food that we eat. As well, intact forests provide temperature regulation and cooling effects, which will only become more important as we face increased warming due to climate change. The Malaluka urbiana habitat also provides refuge for native species that have been impacted heavily during the recent bushfires, Conservation and restoration of communities like Malaluka Urbiana are incredibly important from this perspective, as we have cleared so much forested land already and are now feeling the effects of hotter, drier summers with a long bushfire season. We are at a point now where we can turn things around. 
There is still time, but if we don't act now, I strongly believe we will have reduced capacity to survive as a species in the decades to come. Thank <laughs> you.